At this point, I'd like to turn to some of the problems that we encounter in trying to interpret the results of these studies and in trying to infer causation. If we want to infer causation, that is to conclude that a certain exposure is associated with, the incre with an increased risk of developing disease, the first question we have to ask is, could the association be due to chance? To chance. Let us look at an example. Years ago, there was a major issue raised, which had tremendous legal ramifications, regarding the question of whether bendectin use, bendectin was a sedative hypnotic used by women in pregnancy, the question was whether bendectin use might be associated with congenital malformations. Let us go schematically through the considerations in this issue. This oval, shown diagrammatically, represents a population of pregnant women. Within this oval, there is a subset of women who've used bendectin in pregnancy, shown by the circle. Within this group of pregnant women, there is also a subset of women who deliver a child with a malformation. Well, what are the pro possible relationships between bendectin use and congenital malformations? Let's look at a few scenarios. In this scenario, we see that all the children with malformations were born to women who use bendectin, shown schematically here. This would certainly be very strongly suggestive of a relationship between bendectin use and the risk of malformations. Another possibility is that none of the children with malformations were born to mothers who took bendectin. They're mutually exclusive circles. And this would be strongly indicative that there's no relationship between bendectin use and the development of malformations. What usually happens? What usually happens, however, is that we have a partial overlap of the two circles. There are women who have a child without malformations who didn't take bendectin. Many bendectin users never had an abnorma abnormality in their child. And yet there's an overlap area of women who took bendectin and whose children had malformations. This overlap has taken place by chance, not because bendectin caused the malformation, but just because you would expect with these two size circles, that there would be some overlap between the two. Where does the dilemma arise in interpreting that? When a child with a malformation whose mother has taken bendectin is presented to the jury, what the jury is seeing is a child from this area of overlap. But it doesn't take into account what is the probability that this overlap could occur by chance? And so we have statistical methods that are not part of this presentation for addressing this issue of the importance of chance and could the findings we have of an association be artifacts of chance. The next issue is that of bias. When we come to interpret the findings of a study, we have to ask whether there were mistakes made in the study. And there were many types of bias. One is selection bias. Who has been selected for the cases or for the controls? Was there a bias in the way we selected them that would cause us to come out with certain findings? Or in a cohort study, is there a selection bias in who was selected as exposed people and who was selected for the comparison group of non-exposed? We may have a bias in the type of information we obtain. How good is the information? Does it differ from one group to another? And what we try to do is to minimize the types of bias that might occur in a study, and also to characterize the bias so we know the extent of the impact that the bias could have on our findings. 